Hey, welcome to Bollocks Talks and Tangents. Lenny's still trying to find our show to share it. I don't know. He, this is what happens when you work with boomers. Um, <laughs> Lenny, you okay over there? I'm fine. It's just technology and I do not get along well. Yeah. No, it's okay. It's all right, Lenny. Hey, it's time to start. Um, we just got a fun show. We did Lawmen this week, and there were so many different ones to choose from. Uh, when we got in here, Lenny, Lenny had some of the same ones I had, and he had backups. I did not have backups, so I'm just letting you know. But in the studio with us, Amanda producing the show, replacing Blake Blevins. A lot of yeah, pressure in there. It is. It's a big uh, big shoes to fill. Big shoes. Yeah, they're like size 12. So I'm, um, I'm not that big. Yeah. All right. So the whiskey of the week, we're actually doing four roses single barrel. Lenny is still trying to find how to share the show. Uh -huh. this is, you're just embarrassing yourself at this point. All right. Oh, wait, wait, wait. We could be there. Oh, my gosh. Let me see it. Let me see it. It's you. It's That's you. it. It's you. Right. Now just share that show right there. Share. That's all you got to do. All right. Share now, now. It's, now we're just going to shoot off the pop jars because Lenny has shared the show to his eight friends. Right. So, <laughs> but, we're, but we're national now. Now we're there. Now we're there. All right, we got to talk about our amazing sponsors, Lenny. And I'm going to start off with St. Augustine Distilleries and Citygate Spirits. Um, the way the weather's been this week, it doesn't hurt to have a good spirit and a good whiskey. And cheers to Amanda in the booth. Lenny over yay. here. Cheers. Cheers. Yay, yay, yay. All right. Mm. Nom, 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 nom. All right. Um, they have all different types of flavors at City Gate Spirits. Uh, you know, give them a chance at their tours. I mean, some of the more unique uh, uh, whiskeys you're going to find in town. And yeah. if you go into St. Augustine Distillery, they have award-winning uh, liquors in there. Uh, I know their vodka, their gin, um, the rum is is excellent. The bourbon is bourbon's groovy. Through I think I think we did the we did the uh, single barrel last week, right? Yeah. And then we did the so and then we did the saint the week before. And the saint the week before. So just amazing, amazing uh, whiskeys and alcohol made right here in St. Augustine and St. Augustine owned. All right, uh, Me Hands, Me Hands Irish Pub. Uh, they call it like a fit seafood house, but I mean it's three bars mm -hmm. in one. Mm -hmm. um, you got Johnny's Oyster Bar upstairs. You got the pub uh, downstairs, and you got the backyard. Amazing food everywhere. Uh, if you're planning on going down to Me Hands, I think. Um, Dewey was supposed to play there tonight. They have canceled because the weather was bad for the backyard, but they're still still serving uh, inside and upstairs. Uh, and just get over there before the chaos starts Saturday. Yeah, that's this is your last. It is your last couple of days to get in, enjoy town before it becomes mm -hmm. uh, busy. Yes, er. busy er. Er. All right, Roosevelt Room. The Roosevelt Room. Uh, you you finally got a chance to go over there yeah. and and have a have a lunch breakfast. You're a breakfast yeah. all day kind of guy. Oh yeah. And they have an amazing meeting space, which is doing wonderful. Mm -hmm. So if you want to book a, a Christmas party or something like that, I know they still have some dates available uh, to do that. Sure. Yeah. Uh, just uh, the chef there's a talented, talented individual. He'll cater to what your needs are. And just a wonderful place. So it's 75 people or less. Who wants more than 75 people anywhere? Mm, I don't like more Even than 75 Even though I'm going to throw people. a big party Saturday yeah, night. Well, yeah. Some, so, of us it, some of us weren't invited, but, but we'll it, deal but with it's, that. But it's for, it's for the good of the community. That's very true. So, it's a very good cause. Um, all right. Abear Kresge and Associates, this is good for the good of Troy. <laughs> <laughs> they are my CPA. They can be your CPA. Uh, they're the best accountants in town. Don't think you're saving money by doing your taxes yourself. You're not. These guys uh, know, know where to place you in, in the system and how to get the best return and keep your money. Which is what people want to do. That's what people want to do. Yeah. It's it's not unless like, you can give it a, to a worthy uh, a worthy charity. Well, then then you gives you more. They they allow you to give more money 
Because you have more money in your bank account. There you go. They to, save you money so you to, can do better good things with it. That's right. All right. People that do a lot of good things, St. Augustine Pirate Museum, uh, Cindy over there and their whole crew, they do, do some amazing things at the Colonial Oak. Uh, they, mm-hmm. they have um, the Bull, uh, Crown and Bull, Bull and Crown uh, restaurant uh, also there. Uh, and, I don't know which goes first. Yeah, I can't remember now. <laughs> Crown and Bull, Crown and Bull, Bull. Oh, sorry, Cindy. You, you'll correct me. I know you will. There's, if a, you're crown, watching. there's a crown and a bull. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's on St. George Street, and, and it's, it's, it's there. delightful. Yes. Um, but they just do amazing stuff at the Fire it Museum. It is the Bull and over. Crown Public Bull and Crown. House. Thank you. Thank you. So you'd think, you'd think the crown would be in front of the bull because the bull would be chasing it. But it's, I think the crown would be on the bull. Yeah. It could, could be. be regal. Could be. Could be. All right. Um, but the Pirate Museum is phenomenal for all fun. ages. Uh, get over there and check it out. Uh, Coquina Coast Realty. Coquina Coast Realty. If you have any uh, real estate needs, give me a call, 904 669 7901. Commercial or residential, I can help you out any way you want. Uh, and last but definitely not least, you you and Blake had lunch there yesterday. I had lunch there yesterday. I had the Dado Pastrami, and it was delicious. Kaiser's. What's, be- what's becoming St. Augustine's favorite deli? Oh, I'm telling you right now, it, and not just because of this show. No, no, it's no. He, he did it on his own because he's a, he's an amazing guy. Yep, and he's worked hard, and he's a, a good dad, and he's doing the right thing. And you know what? If you're looking for a small venue to have a, a Christmas party or a private party, go to Kaiser's. You know, he can fit you know twenty people in there comfortably. I would think, mm-hmm. and he'll tailor a menu to you. You got the space to yourself, beer and wine. And by the way, and if you're looking for a great selection of beer, canned and bottles, international, he's got one of the best selections for on premise, off premise. Uh, you can drink it on premise. You can take uh, off premise with it, mm-hmm. not open. Um, and then you know, same thing with the wine. So you can have a beer with your sandwich. You know, it's really it, it's it's just a nice operation. He does a great job there. Yeah. No. It, it, it's. I'm telling you right now, the Roly. <laughs> is is my new go to sandwich. I've had it the last two times there, but I got to work my way through the menu still. Yeah. Um, I've done the French dip, incredible. I've yeah. done the El Tiante, incredible, and I've I've got stuck. I did the pastrami, and now I'm stuck on the rolly. Well, I did I did convince Blake to have his uh, White Street, the uh, ham, turkey, bacon, and cheese sandwich pressed, and he liked it. Yeah, so. I'll so take that as a win. Was, was oh, yeah. No, no. Toast that sucker right up. Such great flavors there. So give, yeah. give them, if you don't know where it is, it's located on Anastasia Boulevard, uh, just mm-hmm. past uh, Gypsy Cab and what was formerly known as the Beacon. Right. Which will be eventually known as something else. Yep. Yep. So, and we had a fun night Tuesday night. My parents were there. We did. Yep. Trivia. Yep. So, rousing chorus of happy birthday to your 80 year old father. He's my, adorable. My father, my father turned 80 this, yep. this week. Yep. So, he's shrinking by the minute. So, and he, did, he wasn't that big when he started. Yeah, I know. That'd be trouble so, for me. He wasn't that big when he started. It was, yeah. I mean, he was, I think he was like five, a little under five, five when I was in high school. And he, mm-hmm. I think he's down to about five, three now. Oof. So I think. Yeah, I think, but he I, casts a tall shadow. Not so much. Not so much. Yeah. <laughs> not so much. Um, but you, you, sir, where did, where did you finish this week? What happened? Fifth. But Out I will of the say, money, you were you were dominating the week before. Well, and we could have been in the money, but there was a conversation between my wife and I on a difference of opinion on haiku. Oh, the you haiku know, question got you? Some, well, it didn't get me. Oh, oh, now but, you're claiming this there? Oh, no, no, no. I got you're a witness. Claiming, I got a witness. You're claiming this? Uh, I got a witness. Donny Osmond? I was big on the seven. Okay. I was big on the seven, you know. Um, but, you know, marital harmony being what it was, we went with her answer. Mm-hmm. And you yeah. know what? So you're blaming your wife. Okay, got it. You're, you're, you hear that, Julie? Uh, How does I, blaming your wife help marital harmony? It doesn't at all. <laughs> well, it, it, it doesn't it, at it all. It did when I acquiesced, and now I'm just going to get beaten for yeah, it. Yeah, you so, completely you know. are going to get beaten for I it. I can never all get All the good you did. I can never get out of my own way. I can, all, you all, know. And, and I don't <laughs> think I've ever agreed with you more. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. All right, and Amanda kicked my ass just an hour ago in trivia, so yeah, don't feel bad good. about it. It was it was a, it was a beating. All right. It was a well, beating. I had to because Blake wasn't here to beat both of us. Yeah, there you go. Right. Yeah, beating. I think Blake cheats and, and and knows the articles ahead of time. He's not doing it off the top of his head. Yeah. Well, he you know doesn't have a family to take care of. He doesn't have fourteen jobs. He only has like three, so he's got time to read all all the articles. And yeah, he and, he's, and he's a and smart one kid. of his jobs is to read the articles. That is true. Oh, well, so he gee. does show prep for the morning. So he reads more articles, which Mike 
and him seem to be I on the I think he same should page. be disqualified. Put him in a soundproof booth. We, well, we put him in a soundproof booth, and he does better because he can get to his phone, and he's quick. He's a very fast Googler. <laughs> he's a quick Googler. I try so. and make sure to turn the camera on so he doesn't yeah. have a chance. So. Two, two thumbs, no waiting. I got but he's you. Work, he's working that other job. Yeah. Um, so we're happy to have Amanda in the booth with Absolutely. us. Absolutely. Thanks. I'm happy to be here. All right. Um, what do you got for Word Origins? I'll I let have you go two. first. I have two of them. Mm-hmm. Um, one is just a slip of the tongue. Okay. Which apparently just happened to me even as we were speaking by, by throwing my wife under the bus. Yeah. That's going to hurt. Fortunately, she won't be watching the show tonight, so I got a day until tomorrow when she yeah, watches Yeah, you can give it. some warning. So, yeah, I could hide. Um, a slip of the tongue, it's, it's very sad. You know, the, the phrase came about in the, uh, in the early 17th century. Um, it translated out of Latin as lap, lapsus lingi, um, which means you're Laps out of the tongue mm-hmm. instead of a slip of the tongue. And it's just making a minor misstatement. You know, it, it, it's nothing, nothing really big. You just, you just either mispronounce something or you, it's, it's not even as bad as letting the cat out of the bag by giving away information to somebody. Um, you just mispronounce something or you misspeak on a minor level. It's not anything earth shattering. Yeah. It's just a slip of the tongue. It's nothing to get overly upset about. Yeah. All right. I'm going to start with tighten your belt. All right. Bobby gave me this the other day in the morning show, and we couldn't come up. I couldn't think of it. He gave me two, mm-hmm. and Tighten Your Belt was the was one of them. And I can't. I and he couldn't come up with it. I didn't write it down what the second one was. Okay, but I I did remember Tighten Your Belt. And you have any idea where Tighten Your Belt comes from? I'd go automotive. Okay, I, I would tighten the belt in the engine. And it, I mean that's that's I didn't go in that route. Yeah. I I thought it was kind of a sports thing, like okay, you got to tighten up a little bit or something like that. But it goes back to. Uh, and, and Amanda already knows because we talked about it on the other show. It goes back to the Depression. Okay. When people were in the soup lines and they were they were doing uh, that and they were, you know, obviously not eating as much as they – so it became a term of being broke. Okay. So if you don't have any money, you got to tighten your belt because you can't afford food. Right. Which, like right now, a lot of people can't afford food. Yeah. Food's gotten yeah. Out, of, out of hand. But it went to the Depression – and uh, it's a hundred hundred percent, you know, basically just from losing weight. Hmm. Well, I hope for in the next couple of weeks I'll be able to tighten my belt. Not, yeah, not for poverty, but not for, for poverty. Not for no. poverty just for, it's not for, for poverty. Yeah, please no. Because I mean, you get paid so much here. <laughs> oh, I don't know what to do with all. You get paid in food. I, well, that's very true, as a matter of fact. So I won't tighten my belt. Oh, I'm just stuck in a cycle. It goes in the other way around. Yeah, that's all right. It's okay. Mm-hmm. So, what's your second one? My second one um, sort of goes with a slip of the tongue. And it's malapropism. Okay. Uh, which is seriously, I've never heard this word before. You said it, yeah. and I thought you were cussing me before the show. Nope. So, did did you hear what what no, it was? Say it again. Okay, yeah, I, 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 I'm 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 slipping my tongue on it. It's a ma- malapropism. Malapropism. All right. Nope. Yeah. I haven't heard that. You got one. it. No. no. Yeah, never heard, it. never heard the is, word ever in my life. And there's a comedian, and it'll it'll come to me. Thanks, it, Dennis was, Miller. It, was it more so? Yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> you got to learn things. I learn things on this show. I have to educate yeah, others. Yeah. Um, a malapropism is somebody who juxtaposed Yogi Berra. Mm-hmm. He was the king of it, um, saying something along the lines of, you, "You know, nobody goes to that place. It's too busy." Yeah. No one goes uh, there anymore. It's too busy. Right. Yeah. Things of that nature. Jumbo um, shrimp. There was. Yeah. A, I'm sorry. Jumbo shrimp. Yeah, no, that's more of an oxymoron. Okay. Malapropism is... Um, there 90, was, there was, 90% of all putts that come up short, they don't go in. That's yeah. right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, y- you know, um, I had a bunch of them up, but it was something like... Uh, it's, uh, I'm on the pinnacle of a pineapple instead of on the pinnacle of a, of a peak. Uh-huh. You know, people just, you know, they get flustered, and, and it comes from... They put a ca- words together and cross words up. Or, or Which seems flustered. to be what you're doing right now. I do that well. Okay. There was a, a show, a play in 1775 called The Rivals by Richard uh, Brinkley uh, Sheridan. Mm-hmm. And um, there was a character in that called Mrs. Malaprop. Mm-hmm. And her comedic um, aspect of this play was juxtaposing words or using the wrong words in a sentence. And that's where the word malapropism came from. Um, and I'm... Probably mispronouncing it again, but she <laughs> well, you said that. it four different ways. So I know you've gotten it good. right at least once. At least um, that's and, what and I do in trivia. I keep saying it until someone goes, "Yeah, that's it." That's <laughs> right. Exactly. Close enough. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, Enunciation's but, not my strong point. Uh, maybe it w- no. He was deaf in one ear. There was a, they couldn't a, hear out of the other. Exactly. There was a comedian yeah. in the in the late sixties, early seventies. Um, Vegas comedian, very very funny, very well regarded, and his whole act 
was doing this. Mm -hmm. and, and it wasn't Mort Soul. You carry on. I'm going to find okay. him. Because okay, we're just going to go on without you. Pay no attention to me. I'm not even All here. Right. Uh, I was going to do drop, get, drop Dead Gorgeous as my other one. Um, oh, and drop, thank you. Drop Dead Gorgeous. Yeah, of course, I'm talking about Amanda. Um, Thanks. Clear, clearly the, the most attractive person to ever be on this show. Um, Certainly tonight. Competition's not strong, Amanda. So I mean, I, it, hey, is a, take it. it is a compliment. You're a very beautiful woman, but you had a certain age, and you stopped getting the woohoo's out of the trucks when you walked down the sidewalk. So I'll take it. I, the, I still get the, my the nerve of them. <laughs> I still get my woohoo's. Um, but uh, uh, Drop Dead Gorgeous actually came out of the 30s with movie stars and stuff no like that, and they don't know okay. you're still talking amongst yourself over there. Seriously, I'm going to take your phone from you. It's done. I'm going to put him in timeout. <laughs> Norm Crosby. All right. Norm Crosby. Norm Crosby. Oh, okay, all right. Norm Crosby. Do you know the name? Yeah, yeah, I know. I yeah. know the name. Yeah, that was his whole act. He was a Vegas guy. Yeah, exactly. And his all, whole act. All, I didn't know he did anything but Vegas. Yeah, and his whole acts were malapropism. Yeah, yeah. but I, I grew up in Vegas, so okay. you know. Yeah. All right. So. Are you done with your malapropism? Mer mer so we got to, we got yeah, but I'm gorgeous it and I'm, like I don't want to drop dead. It's the roof of your mouth when you say <laughs> it's it. It's the peanut butter. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. So Drop Dead Gorgeous came out of the movies and when uh, movie stars became movie stars and it came from the 1930s where everybody went to the movies. Everybody could right. afford to, that's the only entertainment they really had, baseball in the movies. And they couldn't come back to exactly when it was first written or said. Uh, so, but it came from that. But to transition into our next segment, I used the word origin this morning. Did you watch the show this morning? I missed it. I'm sorry. Did you watch the show this morning? I was so close to a trifecta, but no. You did not. You, you watched the last two days. I so, did. Which is very I good. was going for a trifecta, but All I woke right. up at nine. And my first guy uh, <laughs> passed away in Oklahoma. Okay? Okay. And today is the day. Oklahoma became a state. It didn't become a state until 1907. Yes. It became a state late because it was uh, Indian, Indian Territory, and it didn't become a state until 1907. And in my research this morning, I found out what the word Oklahoma meant. And oh. it was hmm. very strange, and, that, and it sounds very prejudiced today and completely not politically correct. So Okla means people. All right, and Homa comes from the Choctaw word Huma, H-U-M-M-A, Huma, which means red. Okay. So Oklahoma really means red people. Okay, that's. But they they named themselves that as an Indian Indian nation because they weren't well. They well, didn't choose to be there. Yeah, that was but, the politically correct thing because that's the way they refer to themselves. Yeah. And right. so the Redskins were actually named in honor of a Native American coach, and it was a great honor, and that was the name that they respected. And it was an actual person that their logo was framed after. So there's actually a petition to get Redskins reinstated. Named, yeah, reinstated because it was an honor and it was complimentary. It wasn't yeah. derogatory. Yeah, well, and, and people, people of, are a tad too sensitive on some of the stuff. A lot, a lot of the stuff is. Um, is a little over the top because even uh, even the sensitivity of certain things, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we 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 as and I'm putting all three of us here as white people have a sensitivity without even asking the other group whether or not it's offensive. Yeah, you know, and we just assume that it's offensive. Right. So we have a tendency to do that as a society, especially now because of the whole woke culture and the cancel cancel world so um but the other thing people don't understand you're talking about the redskins mm. the entire nfl was started by the greatest athlete in our american history he was, a, he, he was a native american mm -hmm. from the carlisle school yep yeah jim yep. thorpe jim thorpe the other thing about jim thorpe is and when he won his gold medal in the decathlon mm -hmm. in the hundred hundred uh meter i don't know if you know this story if mm -hmm. you look at the picture of jim thorpe I want you to scroll down to his shoes. Oh, I've seen this. So he okay. had two different kinds of shoes, right? Yeah, someone stole his shoes right before the race, and he went to the trash can, and he found a left and a right shoe. They were not the same shoe, and they were not the same size. And if you look, he's still wearing those shoes in this very famous picture. Yeah. And he won the 100-meter wearing mismatched two different shoes. mismatched shoes, yeah. and it just shows what – but Jim Thorpe – 
I think Jim Thorpe uh, threw down a thousand dollars for anybody who could stop him on four plays not getting ten yards, hmm. and he never had to pay. Wow! So great town great, in Pennsylvania. I, I think, yeah. I mean, and and he lost his medals because he got paid for pitching in a couple of minor league baseball games. Right. That's wild. So especially the shoes today's weren't league. even running shoes either. No, they were dress shoes. Yeah. Right. Yeah, Especially were, in today's, where, where athletes are getting paid left and right, they're being endorsed, they're being mm-hmm. sponsored, and the, the amateur blur line in Olympics is, is virtually non-existent any yeah. longer. Well, I mean, but, I remember that argument when the Dream Team, and it was a bunch of NBA players. Well, we, well, we were the only team that wasn't paying our players. Right. You know, like, mm-hmm. you know, the USSR, they were paying their players. The, I mean, everybody else who was competitive was already mm-hmm. playing. I mean, like the hockey team in, uh, in Lake Placid, uh, when they beat the Soviet Union, we had amateurs playing against the greatest professionals mm-hmm. in the world. Mm-hmm. So, all right. Well, if you ever want to go canoeing, Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania is a great place to drop your canoe in the water. Is it? Yep. There's a town named after him in Pennsylvania, Jim Thorpe. Yeah. Yep. So, all right. We're here to talk about lawmen, and the reason I went to Oklahoma is because I wanted to talk about the one everybody's talking okay. about right now. Okay. Before we get started, I just wanted on the record. I was out of town at the time, and I have witnesses to prove it. <laughs> Just in case. Any of these guys, any of these guys are check, looking for I'm me. I'm going to check for, with this guy All right. and see if your story okay. holds up. All right. All right. And I'm talking about Bass Reeves. Ooh, bad right. ass. badass. It's, 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 it's the hottest TV show that's out there. Yep. It's written by the uh, same gentleman who's mm-hmm. written uh, 1923 and 18. Taylor Sheridan. Uh, yeah, Taylor Sheridan. Uh, just a talented, Yellowstone. Talented writer, about. Yellowstone. There you go. Um, but... I, I had to start watching the show. I knew the story a little bit about right. Bass Reeves. Now I've had to read a little bit more, and I was like, "All right, we got to talk about this guy." Yeah. Have you watched any? You only watched the first. No, episode. I watched both of them. Okay, but I knew about him for it. There's there's a great little show, which we'll tie into later. You do this, and I'll bring that in later when we get to our next guy. Mm-hmm. All right. So Bass Reeves, he was born in uh, Arkansas. He was born a slave. Mm-hmm. The family's name was Reeves. Right. Okay. So he kept kept the family Ooh. name as Reeves, um, and that's that's what what are you going to say? I'm just thinking Superman, but carry on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It didn't, <laughs> it didn't work out for either one of them, Reeve or Reeves. Yeah. Um, but but Bass didn't become a lawman until he was 37 years old. He was a farmer. Well, he was an attempting farmer. Well, right, exactly. He wasn't very good at it. He yeah. was an attempting cool. farmer, um, and some of the really crazy stuff. Is he? He was a black man who was a, a Texas Ranger, a U.S. No, Marshal. U.S. Not, Marshal. He was not, not a Texas US, Ranger. I, I, I checked up on that. Yeah, he was a sure. U.S. Marshal. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. uh, he was appointed by uh, Judge Parker. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, he he came into and he fought on the side of the Confederacy. Well, not by choice. Well, he he was it was his master right. was a colonel right and, and said you're coming with me. But his m- master is the one who taught him how to shoot right. and all that during that time. He was an incredible marksman, mm-hmm. um, you know. And in the TV show Bass Reeves, he's already killed like ten people in like one right. episode. Yeah. And uh, in real life, he actually had to shoot seventeen people. Yep. He had to kill seventeen people. Uh, he was never wounded. 32 Correct. years, yep. 32 years, yep. his hat was shot off three times, belt buckle. and his belt was shot off once. Yep. So, Go figure. Yeah. And how does your belt get shot off and, and, and you still walk be away? Okay. Woo, I don't man. know. I, I had a belt buckle on this morning, and I, I should have stood. I had my, I have a Blevins. Uh, someone gave yeah. me a, a, a big B redneck DeLand belt buckle. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I wear it maybe once a year. Well, if you go to the rodeo. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And, and, and uh, I had that on this morning. I was like, okay, I, I, I should have showed off my belt buckle. Um, but one of the weirdest things is he had to capture his own son. Yep. His son murdered his wife. Not his not son's Bass's wife. wife. Right, his son's wife. Son, son right, murdered right, his right. own wife. And Bass had to take him in. Try put him on trial, and mm-hmm. he went to jail for eleven years. Yep, since twenty twenty year sentence got commuted in eleven. I think he was in Leavenworth, as a matter of fact. Yeah, um, Bass had eleven kids with yeah. two women. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, actually, I think all the kids were with the first wife. He had he had he had one with the second wife. Did he? Oh, he had okay. one with one with the second wife. After Jenny passed away, he had one with his second wife. Yeah, yeah. But um, but Bass ended up taking a job mm-hmm. in Oklahoma at the end of his career for uh, two years. Um, 
he was uh hold on he was a a deputy at a what was yeah. the name of it shoot uh muskegee police yeah. department muskegee oklahoma absolutely yeah. and you know when he lost his job 1907 yeah you know when why he lost his a, job became a state yeah and it was illegal for him it wasn't legal for him to be a, a, a he was black and they wouldn't let him be a sheriff because they wouldn't let him U, be a cop U, u.s rules wouldn't let him be a cop or Oklahoma rules, I'm not sure which, which wow. superseded which, but yeah. yeah. That's pretty wild. And interestingly enough, when Judge Parker appointed him, um, there were you know hundreds of deputy marshals across the country. He was the first and, and maybe quite possibly the only black U.S. marshal west of the Mississippi. Mm -hmm. spoke na he spoke the native languages. Yeah. He, he spoke, spoke uh, Choctaw, Choctaw and yeah. So. So, um, but his brother ended up being a, a judge. He has... Uh, Two great great grandkids that play in the uh, uh, hockey league. Canadian, yeah, yeah. Canadian hockey league, or Canadian football, like, CFL. Oh, oh, it might be Canadian. So they're football. CFL, You're yeah, right. yeah. CFL. He had, he had somebody played in the NFL as well. Yeah, yeah. he had a great grandson yeah. that played in the NFL. Yeah, yeah. but he had eleven children. Mm -hmm. uh, he was thirty-two years as a lawman, and he d he died in nineteen ten. Arrested over three thousand people. Three thousand. Three thousand yeah. people. Yeah, this is crazy. And a lot of times he was working by himself. Yeah, most of the time. Yeah. Yeah. And he was clever. You know, there were times where he would use disguises. Yeah. You know, he started out as a, a great shooter and a dogged, a dogged pursuer, but he ended up learning and crafting great detective skills as well as his career went on. Mm -hmm. So that was really pretty groovy. Yeah, he's a, he's a fascinating character. Fascinating character. Yeah. Wikipedia um, says that he was once charged with murdering a posse cook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he was he was yeah. charged with it, but it, he said it was an accident. Right. And yeah, because, while he was cleaning his gun. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, here's a guy who knows everything about guns mm -hmm. and possibly does, you know, but he he shot his posse or his posse cook. Yeah. Uh, he was acquitted. Yeah. Too much salt, man. I told you, <laughs> not too much salt. Yeah. Well, yeah. They they acquitted him, and they they they. And they said it was. Like, they didn't yeah. really say okay, he's innocent. Right. They said it was because of his record. Yeah. Is why they let him go. Right. But I can tell you this. Like, guns guns sometimes go off accidentally when you're cleaning your gun. My my uncle, who's still with us today, he's uh he's uh ninety one years old, uh, and he's fallen out of uh, he, we call him Morris because he's got nine lives. <laughs> I mean, he, 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 he had brain surgery uh like twenty years ago. Um, he fell out of a tree when he was 75 and broke his back and neck. Dang. Still lived. All right. But he was cleaning the gun in the, in the living room. Mm -hmm. The gun went off. The rifle went off, went through the bedroom and past my aunt and missed her by Dang. maybe five feet. So, so he, it's un un Uncle Paul and Aunt Shelby. Hate to be telling stories on you, but you tell it much louder, and, <laughs> and it gets better every time. So just like Bass, he almost shot the posse cook. He always. <laughs> when, when I read that, I how'd thought of spell, my. How'd you spell that? I thought of my <laughs> Uncle Paul, and one of the greatest stories of my Uncle Paul was uh, he was hunting in, and this was he was probably in his seventies when this happened. Uh, he was hunting at, uh, you know how you have hunting leases. Mm -hmm. And he was hunting at one of the camps, and they had a hunting lease. And he didn't really want to get up early that morning. So he kind of waited until, I mean, because you usually get up before the sun comes up, and you go and get in your stand and stuff like that. So he decided, he was like, ah, I'm just going to take my time. And he walks out to this meadow, and he just sits down. He sits down for like 30 seconds. And I guess he made just enough noise that he made a buck jump up. And it, the buck jumped up, <laughs> stood right there. He shot that buck. When he shot another buck popped up behind him. He turns around, he shoots this buck. Now, while he's shooting this buck, this buck gets up and he shoots this buck again. Come to find out, this buck was not the same buck. He had, And you can only kill two deer Oops. in Georgia. Oh, no. All right? This is before there were... You know, cell phones or anything like that. He had two deer laying on top of each other. Oops. He killed three <laughs> deer in less than 30 seconds. As soon and as only my that. Uncle Paul can tell this story. You think I get the... Like, like I said, he's he's the kind of guy that goes to tell a joke and starts laughing because he already knows the punchline. <laughs> yeah. He's that kind of storyteller. I want to hang out with Uncle Paul. Oh, you got to hang out with Uncle Paul. Yeah. You know, yeah. and he's he's a beautiful and he's still brilliant at 91 years old. Uh, uh, just, just, but that story 
<laughs> but I think it was the same hunting camp he fell out of the tree stand like a year later. And, and now I, I feel for poor Uncle Paul because it's tough enough schlepping one deer out of the woods. Now you got to schlep three. Well, he he was like, screw it. I'm going to go back to the camp. He went back to the camp because he, you know, he got nervous because he, he just broke law in yeah. Georgia and he was too pretty for a uh, prison. <laughs> Just like all our family members, um, and uh, so he had to go back to the camp and have have his son. Actually, I think it was his son Rodney that claimed the other one. Yeah, fair enough. So, but he, he literally, <laughs> I've never heard of anything like that. But th- of course, that only happens to my uncle Paul. The right. weirdest hangover but, hunting trip ever. But yeah. before we go, but before we go any further, a little cautionary tale for all you gun owners out there. And I would venture to say there's probably one or two that may be listening to us. You can't prove that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Take the damn bullets out of the thing before you clean it. Seriously. Life yeah. lessons. Well, you'd think you'd do that. Well, that would make a lot of sense, you know? Mm-hmm. Because if you don't, I, I you th- shouldn't have a gun. I take I take my bullets out if I'm handling the gun in any way, shape, or form. Yes, please. So. And don't forget to clear your chamber. Mm-hmm. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. yeah, that's all. That's and all. I only use revolvers, so I don't... It's easy enough to check. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. you just look down it. Yeah, right. just ask right. Alec Baldwin. Right. Yeah. 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 And that's your public service announcement for tonight's episode of Bollocks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Gun safety, please. Gun safety by Dick Cheney. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, so. It was a hunting story, so that's yeah. fair. Yeah, you know. That's fair. Hey, what's over there? <laughs> <laughs> Why would you even do that? <laughs> Come on. Apparently it was Come a, on, Richard. He was a bad lawyer. That's all. Yeah. Come on, Richard. Maybe he fell out of a tree stand. Yeah. <laughs> he thought it was the deer that bounced back up. <laughs> all right. Um, who you got? Who you want to go I with? I have Bill Till- Tillum. Tillum. T- T-I-L-G-H-M-A-N. Tillum. Guy was the prototypical law fu- uh, uh, lawman. But, you know, before we get into this, I-, I-, I am fascinated by the Wild West and Old West lawmen. Mm-hmm. Because if you look in their biographies, almost every one of them, the first thing is gunfighter. Yeah. And then lawman. And then brothel owner. Gambler. Saloon keeper. Yeah. You know? I have, I, have, I have Bat Masters and U.S. Army Scout. Yes. Usually there's some oh, yeah. military in there. Oh, yeah. Lawman, professional gambler, buffalo hunter, journalist. Yep, buffalo hunter. Yep, yeah. You yeah. got to be a renaissance Absolutely. man on the on the frontier. Yeah, yeah. But it's it's you know so and and these guys you know talk talk about blurred lines. So many of these old west guys and and I, I asked this earlier before we were on the air. You know Kansas. You know, Kansas was the freaking Wild West, and it's Kansas. Yeah. You you know, all right, I'll give it to Kansas in the Midwest, but you think of the Wild West. You're thinking Arizona. You're thinking Texas. You're thinking New Mexico. You're thinking places like that. Even, I'll I'll give you Missouri. But Kansas? Yeah. Kansas is Kansas. Yeah. You know, I don't think of that as the way. But that's where Dodge City is. I understand that. I know. And Dodge City was the the epicenter of Wild Westdom. Yeah. There was so, a time Kansas was the frontier. I know. All right. I know. Fascinating. It really is. But this guy was he was a lawman forever. Where was he at? Kansas? Uh, among other places. But Oklahoma primarily. Uh-huh. Um, brings us back to Oklahoma. He was born in 1854, died in 1924. And that was another thing when I was doing a bunch of research. We were talking about Wyatt Earp, we were talking about Bat Masterson, um, talking about a lot of these other people that, you know, they, you, you think of them and you think of them in the late 1800s. Well, these guys lived into the early 20th yeah, no, century. No, and, and a lot of these guys who lived these really hard lives lived them. lived very full lives oh, yeah. well beyond the average yeah. of the time. Well, yeah. And it doesn't, unless it doesn't they, unless they got shot. Yeah. 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 He, he didn't even die of old age either. I'm sure he'll get to it. Yeah. Who was this? Uh, Tell him. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, no, he didn't, but it was weirder even still. That's, that's, that's a quirk in this story that's just, just yeah, it's confusing. Um, he captured Bill Doolin. Mm-hmm. Who was um, the head of the Wild Bunch? Yep, that was one of his most uh, famous famous captures. Uh, he was a state senator in Oklahoma. He was a good friend of Teddy Roosevelt. Uh, he became the chief of police of Oklahoma City much later in life, and was responsible for cleaning up the crime in Oklahoma City. Um, when he retired, he made a movie, "The Passing of Oklahoma Outlaws." Actually, he wasn't retired at this point in time. Um, they, they made a movie, he and a couple of other ex-lawmen mm-hmm. made a movie called The Passing of the Oklahoma Outlaws. They made this movie in 1915, so obviously a silent movie. It was 96 minutes long. They starred in it, they produced it, they directed it, they brought it across the country, they did the whole thing. It was a lot of revisionist history in there, believe yeah. me when I tell you that. Um, it was a 96-minute film. There's only 13 minutes of it that have survived, and I'd love to find that somewhere. Um, and there was revisionist history. But he but dies in 1924. In I'm sorry? But was Woody Harrelson in it? 
Yeah. No. <laughs> that was but Palmetto. I, but, yeah. I, but, I, but I did finish my homework. And I do have, I do have a question on um, Shawshank Redemption, which we can talk about off the air. No, we cannot um, talk about it on air. There's all right, no fine. Reason, there's no reason to talk about stuff off the air. Well, then fine. Spoil, <laughs> spoiler alert. Yeah. You know, um, he's sitting there talking to Red. Uh-huh. And, um, you know, he's going, look, when you get out, there's a, a, a wall in a meadow in, I, I don't know if it was in Maine or wherever it was, because they were in Maine, and there's a big oak tree at the end of it, and you go to it and you'll find an obsidian rock there that doesn't belong there, because okay. the, the guy was a geologist, and I'm yep. spacing on his name now. Yep. Um, Andy uh, Dufresne. Dufresne. Yeah, Dufresne, Dufresne exactly. Yeah. Um, and he goes, when you get out, you know, Go find this rock. Robbins. Oh wait, that's it. Sorry, yeah, all right. Find find this rock. Um, it, it won't look like any of the others. Take that up and under it, pry up what's underneath it, and you're good. Mm-hmm. I'm going. This is great. Andy Dufresne is in prison when this happens. Mm-hmm. When he tells him the story. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When did he go? Put the letter to Red and the money in that tin can in that thing. Because I'm thinking, once he crawled through that sewer, and by the way, you know, I am remiss in finally watching that movie. It was fabulous, and I was tearing up through a bunch of it. Um, great movie, especially at the very end of it. Um, but he goes, he, he crawls through the sewer, he gets out, he washes off. <laughs> there are a lot of just desserts in there, and that was sweet, I tell you that. Um, when did he go? Back to that meadow to put before, the thing before, down there. Had before to, he went to the... To see what Taneo? Yeah. yeah. All right, fine. But he, went, he went before because he, he had to take care of Red. Yeah. Red I, I understand Red, that. Red took care of him, so he had to take care of Red. So no, my thing Red, was, I always enough. figured there was something there between he and his wife. And so that was a place that he and that was special to he and his wife. So right, the rock was probably right. there. And there was some sort of time capsule between he and his wife. But the and letter was addressed to Red. Out. Yeah, was, but he it switched was... it out before he went to Mexico. Yeah. Okay. Because I'm thinking, you know, you, you, you're on the lam. Mm-hmm. You, you just got yourself all the money that, that, the, uh, that, that you laundered for the evil prison warden. Mm-hmm. I think you're sticking around to go dig holes in the ground to, to leave money for your buddy. And I'm glad that he did. Mm-hmm. Because at the end, when Red's come walking down the beach, but he left, it's great. He left law enforcement with so much information about the prison. They were not worried about him. Yeah. Right, right. You know, at yeah. that point, yeah. they were thankful of him. And oh, they yeah. weren't worried about him. Yeah. yeah. So I don't think the search for Andy... No, but was that was that strong. That was yeah, the only that was the only thing that, that that was the only thing that confused me about this movie is when did he go and do that so that it was specifically for Red? Yeah. Because I mean he's he's in prison. He couldn't have done it before he got out of prison. Mm-mm. Okay. All but right. he went to the bank. Oh yes, he, he did. Got all the money Many out. banks. He, he, Many he, banks. He went to the bank and yeah. he took the time to do it. He wasn't in a panic getting to Mexico or all right. uh, No, and he doesn't he doesn't look like a hardened criminal either. He is a baby faced right. bookkeeper. Yeah, right. And so like right. no one's gonna suspect him anyway. He was a banker. Yeah. Right, exactly. He was a banker okay. who never did the crime. He wasn't a criminal until he broke out of prison. Yeah. Right. Until the, until there the wasn't board. even a one-armed man. Okay, the, but now we're going to wrap yeah. up. Port, right, <laughs> exactly. Um, and for those of you watching at home, that's a that's a throwback to a wonderful TV show that didn't have Harrison Ford in it. Yeah, it was a good movie. Too. <laughs> the movie was good. Um, but Bill Tillingham, to to tie up this poor gentleman in 1924, he's 70 years old. He's got a badge as a special invecti- investigator. Great. So he's in Oklahoma, and there's a prohibition officer. So in 24, makes okay. sense. A prohibition officer who is drunk, disorderly, and firing his gun. And Bill goes to arrest the guy, and the guy gut shoots him and kills him. The officer does. The, the drunken uh, prohibition agent. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's just a fed. Yeah. Take it from Hunter Biden. Revenuers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I thought it was um, funny. No one knew what a revenuer was. The how? Who, 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 who does, how? No. How do you not know I that? Had three people come out and ask what a revenuer was. <sighs> Damn low Biden citizens. Yeah. Um, so or, what is or, it? or people from the North. <laughs> she doesn't know what a revenuer <laughs> is. Oh, really? Um, treasury agent who is basically looking for illegal stills because you ain't paying your liquor taxes or you're making liquor illegally. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, those are revenue. Yeah, so if you're all a moonshiner, right. yeah. the people that come after you are the revenuers. Oh, right. right. So, and I have probably the most They're the ones that are famous to get revenue. Yeah. yeah. Um, I have two revenuers still on my list. Oh, good to go. And then we've got and we've got a fun one. Yeah. Um when when he died, poor Bill Tillingham, he was he was the third person to lie in state in the Capitol in Oklahoma. 
And um, his pallbearers were the current governor, the ex-governor, the attorney general, and a U.S. marshal. That's how well-respected this gentleman was. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, He's a good-looking dude, talks too. about Dodge City. Oh, yeah. All right. And I got Bat Masterson. I was going to do have. Wyatt Earp. I know. And I decided to go with Bat. Bat seemed to be a better character. Right, yeah. and when we talked about Wyatt Earp, well, we fun. talked about we talked about word origins. Yeah. Okay. So in the movie Wyatt Earp, mm-hmm. you remember what uh, the famous line that Val Kilmer says to Wyatt Earp when they're about to go get in a fight? Uh, he says, "He says I'll be your Huckleberry." There you go. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Okay. They screwed up the line. <laughs> Did you guys know that? No. no. They completely screwed up the line. The line is, I'll be your huckleberry. And they said, I'll be your huckleberry. A huckleberry is a pallbearer. Okay. All right. That makes more sense. And they just screwed up the line, but it's one of the most famous it's great, lines right. yeah. in a movie. I'll be yeah. your huckleberry. Yeah. And it sounds like, I'll be your friend. I'll be your. But yeah. what he was saying, what the actual line should have been was, I'll be your huckleberry. Because, you know, I'll carry your casket is what he was saying. And it completely screwed up, but it just doesn't sound right calling it a huckleberry. No, anymore. And and because it's a, Wyatt out, your huckleberry sounds so much cooler. Yeah. And Wyatt outlived him by you know fifty years. Yeah, and the other thing 40 is forty years. The yeah. other thing is is you know uh, Doc, who was a dentist, right? And you know not really a wonderful human being, but mm. they made it sound like he was going to die any time. He lived seven more years after. Uh, yeah, he died in his okay. mid, he died in his early or mid thirties. Yeah, he, yeah, he, he lived, lived seven long, years right? yeah. after the OK yeah. Corral. Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah, for sure. But in the movies, it's like, oh, he's going to oh, die yeah. any time. He's on so. his deathbed multiple times. Yeah. Well, that's, you know, why, every time you're spitting blood into your handkerchief, you know, you're usually not going to live that long yeah. in that time. Yeah, so longer. All right, so I, I did Bat Masterson. And yeah, Pat, me too. Go. Bat was a, a unique guy. Um, like you said, a lot of these guys, uh, Army Scout, lawman, professional gambler, journalist. Buffalo. He was born in Quebec. Canadian, absolutely. Yes, sir. Yeah, he yeah. was born in Quebec. So, I mean, and just an interesting, interesting guy. But we got to talk about. I mean, do you have any more you want to talk about, Bat? Because I, oh I, got, yeah. I want to get to the revenue. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll run through Bat real fast. First of all, um, if, if you're scrolling around and it's on Freeview, there's a show called Wild West Chronicles, which is where I first learned of Bass Reeves. Okay. Um, it, it's a it's a show from a bunch of years ago. And basically, the narrator in that is Bat Masterson. Okay. Because Bat Masterson was a journalist. Yeah. And in this, he's interviewing people for their stories. He interviewed the, you know, one of them was he interviewed somebody related to Bass Reeves or Bass Reeves. He interviewed the daughter of Bell Starr. Um, and, and it's, it's, it's and great. Did, didn't he interview like Geronimo and. He may, he may have in real life. I'm yeah. just talking about the TV show, okay. which is where, where there's one of the episodes was all about. Actually, there are two of them about Bass Reeves. Um, but it's interesting because he wrote a column for about 18 years for the New York Morning Telegraph when he got out of the law business. Mm-hmm. Um, he did box. He, he was a, a, a big boxing aficionado, and he was a sportscaster, a sports writer as well. Okay. And he was a big boxing fan. And he wrote a, he wrote a, categ- a, a column um, called uh, Masterson's View on Timely... Timely topics, very bollocks like of him. Yeah, very I think. bollocks. Yeah. Very bollocks like of him. <laughs> yeah, just put it all together. Um, but he wrote five. He wrote five five biographies. He wrote one of Ben Ben Tome, who I don't know who that is. Wyatt Earp, Luke Short, who was another lawman, uh, Doc Holliday, and Bill Tillam. He wrote mm-hmm. five biographies. Um, he wrote his weekly column. He was a good buddy of uh, Damon Runyon. So if you're familiar with the um, show Guys and Dolls. Mm-hmm. Yes, the character Sky Masterson. Oh, okay. Is modeled after Bat Masterson. I never put that together. And his first name was Bartholomew, yeah. which he hated. Bartholomew which is why... William Barclay Masterson. And his tombstone says William. It does not have Bartholomew on it. He didn't like it and shortened it to Bat. So William Barclay is actually a theologian that published lots of commentaries on the Bible out of the UK. And so I wonder, since he was a journalist, if there's a family connection there. Hmm. Very good. Well, they were Might Canadian. His father was Canadian. He was Canadian. Yeah, this, it's possible. I mean, it's, not, it's not that far of a reach, actually. So. And he had a heart attack at his desk in 1921 in the newsroom. No. Yeah. He was also friends with Teddy Roosevelt, so yes. Teddy Roosevelt yeah. knew yes. all the cool kids. Yep, absolutely. Well, Teddy yeah. Roosevelt was a cool kid. There For you sure. Go. There you go. He didn't start out as a cool kid. Right. He started yeah. out as a sickly boy. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. But uh, um, right. you sorry, wanna, you, so we got to talk you, about our sponsors, and you're going to okay. talk about Kaiser's and how amazing it is. But you're going to do it quickly. Lunch there yesterday, fabulous, great, great selection. If you're a beer aficionado, just go to Kaiser's and look in his cold and room temp to take home. That's all I have to say about Kaiser's. The food is great. The sandwiches are outstanding. The staff is nice. Small parties. Get your beer and wine there. You won't go wrong. Man, have you made it there yet? No, I need to go. Oh, so good. I love me an Italian sub. They have good uh, The pepperoni. bada bing, baby. Yeah. I'm go with the bada, bada bing. bing. The All bada right. bing. It's the first one on the menu. All right. That's the first one I'll try. All right. Uh, Coquina Coast Realty, if you have commercial needs, if you have uh, any real estate needs at all, give me a call, 904-669-7901, 904-669-7901. St. Augustine Pirate Museum, they have over 800 Arr. artifacts. I can tell you right now, um, it's the most underrated attraction we have in St. Augustine. It got here from... Uh, Key West, and we're mm -hmm. so happy to mm -hmm. have them here. Um, just they do an amazing job. It's an authentic, true museum. And every time you go in there, you're going to learn something new. If you want to learn something new about your taxes, you need to call Abear Kresge and Associates. These guys are the best in town. They'll save you money. Um, they'll do your right, honest people, and that's what you want out of your accounting firm. Mm -hmm. Roosevelt Room, I'm telling you right now, the candy bacon. Candy Roosevelt. Yep, Roosevelt. We already talked about it, but this one was FDR. So, really? Yeah, it was named huh. after FDR, the Roosevelt Room, because it was Prohibition Kitchen. And who, who broke okay. up Prohibition Kitchen? All right. Who saved us from prohibition? Thank you, to, uh, thank you, uh, Franklin. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you, Franklin. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers to that. Cheers. Cheers, Miss Amanda. Thank yep, you. I got mine. It's the only time I can get Amanda to cheers a Democrat. Uh, <laughs> Shut um, up. <laughs> cheers. Uh, Amanda's drinking out of a coffee cup. We weren't sure which uh, one. It clean serves her right in that yeah. case. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but the Roosevelt Room, I'm telling you right now, the candy bacon might be the best appetizer in town. Mm -hmm. uh, they have some amazing food there. Um, yeah, I, I just it's delicious. I, I have never had anything bad on the menu. It's a pretty little space. Too. Also, great food, great atmosphere, and great spirits. Me hands. My favorite Talk restaurant about our in guy town. Reggie. Our guy Reggie, he, he's and they do a wonderful job. Uh, we're starting the Night of Lights in in two days, and they do a wonderful job of decorating. And they're right up there, if not the winner every year. They're damn close, yeah, and they, deservedly so. They come in second. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Just not that you're biased. Uh huh. Just saying, uh -huh. I know who comes in first. Uh huh. And it's the Hilton. Fine. The Hilton comes in first, which is lit already. But we yeah. have. But we have Twice as many lights than anybody else in town. That's true. So, um, but um, but not to take away from me, Anson. Reggie, you do an amazing job. Your staff is incredible. They're what you think about when you come to St. Augustine, in my opinion. And and we were talking about you know philanthropy and charities a little bit earlier. Um, Reggie and me hands is one of the most philanthropic restaurant and participatory places in town. If you're having an event, they'll sponsor you. If, if there's a food table, whatever it is, they're there. They're out there. They're supporting the community in a hundred different ways. If there's, a, if there's a 5K, if there's a 3K, they've got a team running in it. Mm -hmm. If there's a bowling event, they've got a team bowling in it. They're, they're just... Not only are they just a restaurant, they're really involved in the community, um, and it shows. The staff has been there for years. Uh, it's just a wonderful... And the food is great! Yeah, the food is amazing. I'm telling you right now, um, you know, that their pot pie is just incredible. Um, all right. Uh, also incredible and wonderful people there. Uh, St. Augustine Distillery and City Gate Spirits. Mm -hmm. St. Augustine mm -hmm. Distillery won best tasting tour in the entire country. It's amazing how quickly so they, that means it beat they out did that. Jack Daniels, yeah. it beat out, you know, all, all the, everything in Tennessee, yeah. everything in Kentucky that you think about whiskeys and you think yeah. about bourbons, St. Augustine Distillery won that award. And they did it in a very short, I mean, they, they got that a couple years after they moved into town. Mm -hmm. That's how, how great it is, you know, and they give samples. Well, and, and, and the unique part is, for some reason, it, it takes less time in Florida for a bourbon to cure. What if it's the heat and the humidity? I, I don't know. It, it, and it, but they, they can turn around bourbons quicker. And I would guess it's the humidity. The, wet, the wood is wet, and so the bourbon can penetrate the wood It might wood absorb faster. it quicker. Yeah, yeah I, I don't know. But, uh, I wonder, well, but can we really, and, and, and can we really, can we really come, call it a bourbon? They're going to they're gonna come on, uh, and I've talked to Will about this. They're going to come on. We're going to have to go in the other studio so we have more space. 
and then we're going to do some tastings, and they're going to do some mixing. Uh, um, can Amanda, I produce that night? I think, Amanda, you're going to need to produce that <laughs> night because my man Blake's not really a drinking Absolutely. guy. Uh, um, and we'll all get Blake to drive us home. Outstanding. So, I, uh, but, but they, they offered. Oh, excited. I, 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 saw, I saw Will, who's uh, the GM over there, and he's like, yeah, I want to come on. I was like, all right. We're going to have to schedule that, and we're going to have a, a beautiful night. Very exciting. Yeah. Something That'd something really exciting to yeah. look forward to. Absolutely. Yeah. So just excited about them and love the partnership. Um, and all our sponsors are just true community businesses. Part of the fabric of St. Augustine. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. yeah they They're really the are. reason this city's great. Is yeah. I mean, you look at our sponsor list, and actually any of the sponsors that are on our entire network, mm -hmm. they're we're all great. so fortunate mm -hmm. to live in a town. Yep. Well, we have amazing people mm -hmm. like that. Absolutely. So, yeah. all right, yeah. talking about other amazing people, you want to, you want to go? You want me to go? You're up. I'm going to go with Frank Hammer. Okay. The oh, hammer. goodness gracious, the floor got further away. <laughs> Whew. Which, oh, by man. the way, he is a Texas Ranger. Yes. He was a Texas he Ranger. He was a Texas Ranger. All right. One riot, uh, one Ranger. Yeah. That's all you need. He was a British Army officer. Yeah. <laughs> Did not know that. Yeah. So, but he was born in Texas. Stranger um, still. Yep. And who was the most famous people he caught? He got Bonnie and Clyde. Where'd he get them? Louisiana. Yeah. He wasn't even in Texas. Yep. Yeah, no, no. He hunted them. He wasn't no, even no, in no. Texas. No, they no, were, no. They were looking. They were hunting. They laid it. They actually, they laid in wait. Yep. All right. So he was born in 1884. March 17th. He was born on St. Patrick's Day. Okay. All right. 1984. Lived a fairly full life. He died in 1955. Okay. So he, it's, that's, that's a pretty full Impressive. life. Especially for the job he did. Yeah. Um, what was the year that he got Bonnie and Clyde? Is it in the early 30s? 34, I believe. Yeah, okay. So 1934. And um, he was also one, one of the people that started, uh, one of his things was a uh, fight against the Ku Klux Klan. Oh, I wonder if you knew your man Stetson. He did not. The times don't overlap really okay. well. Uh, he started his fight well before Stetson Ooh, okay. in 1922 as senior captain of the Texas Rangers. So now, he's in the Texas Ranger Hall of Fame, and <laughs> and I didn't know there was such a thing. Yeah, it's in Arlington at the ballpark. Yeah, it's, a, it's right there. <laughs> it's right next to Elvis Andrews. So I'm sure he's yeah. really happy Might about the Might not be the, the same chamber. one. <laughs> no, oh no, all right, fine. I, it's so confusing. So, I don't know. And he was named one of the greatest <laughs> American lawmen of the 20th century. Okay. Now, he had a partner that was with him in the hunt for Bonnie and Clyde. Who was played by who in the movie? This is what I'm bringing up. <laughs> okay. So, do you have who, who was with him at the time? Because yeah. I don't remember. I do. Um, Manny Galt. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, um, one was played by, and I don't remember who was which. One so was played Kevin by Costner Kevin Costner. Was Frank Hammer. And the other yeah. was my man. Your man, Woody, Woody Harrelson. 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 There you go. You know, I haven't seen the movie. It's great. The, movie. the, the Texas, the, the, the highway, the, the highway man. Oh, that's a, it's a fantastic excellent. movie. Not seen, I, I First know. of all, you got Kevin Costner and Woody Harrelson. Mm -hmm. So right there, and the actors I, I, I love them both. Yeah. They have a really good yeah. dynamic in yeah. that movie. Oh, it's yeah, fantastic. Yeah. 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 Um, the Texas Ranger Hall of Fame is in Waco, Texas. Okay. Waco, Texas. By Baylor. But his list of and people... And Branch Davidian. <laughs> yeah. His, his, it's, list, it's Texas, his list of Amanda, people... It's Texas. That's true. He caught is absolutely amazing. Who else? No, I mean, just uh, just all he did for Prohibition. I mean, he's in the... They talk about thousands, but he put people away in, like, mega groups. Wow. Like, he would catch, like, 50, 60 people at once. Because he was also a Prohibition agent at one point, okay. you know, during the time that he was there. Right. And... You know, he, you know, he, he, it's just an absolute, he was a, a member of the Cattlemen's Association mm -hmm. uh, for Rustlers, Prohibition Unit, Bonnie and Clyde. Um, you know, he, he caught the whole Barrow gang. It wasn't yeah. just Bonnie and yeah. Clyde. Yeah. He's credited with saving at least 15 people from lynch mobs in his fight against the Klan. Hot damn. Yeah. Uh, see, that's outstanding. Yeah. That's just fabulous. That's the part you really don't get to hear. No, and that's and, and that's and just, was that in yeah. the high women? Uh, no, I don't no, think so. I'm no, they were just focusing on Bonnie and Clyde. Yeah. 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 So hmm. I mean it's just, I, I don't know of all the people I read, uh Frank Hammer to me is the most refreshing and I, I knew I knew of the high women. Right, sure. But I never read anything about Frank. I read about Bass Reeves. Right. 
but I never read anything about Frank Hammer until this week. Yeah, yeah. I started looking into him when we saw the Highwaymen because yeah. then, you know, it's just another rabbit hole to dig into. Yeah. So Given died, the last name Hammer, what do you think his dad did? Uh, <laughs> it, it was construction. He was a blacksmith. Oh, was he All a right. blacksmith? Yeah. Okay. You go. okay. While the iron's hot. Yeah. <laughs> so... But I, I, as of all the people that I went through, mm-hmm. he was the most impressive to me as a true lawman because of being in Texas, which is a very prejudiced state in the 1920s and 30s. And in 1922, <laughs> he, decides, he decides to take on the Klan. Right. And... What I know from my conversations with Stetson Mm -hmm. and um, my doing the movie in 1964, about 1964, St. Augustine, the corruption within law at that time and the prejudice within law at that time. Frank Frank Hammer is a hero to me now. Yeah, good. You know, and... and As he should be. As of last week, I didn't know who he... I I knew his name, but I Mm -hmm. didn't know who he was. I clicked on it and it was like, oh, that sounds familiar. I know the name. Right. And I clicked on it. And when I started reading, I was like, holy shit, this guy's a badass. That and is- all the people we have here are badasses. Just oh, yes. Yeah, the next guy was, but he's kind of wimpy. Yeah. Well, you know, he also. Por- I got news. Wait, wait, wait. His portrayal is bigger than him. All right. Frank Hammer, played by who? Kevin Costner. Uh, was, uh, was he Kevin Costner? Or Kevin Costner. Yeah, he was Kevin Costner. All right. Yeah. Elliot Ness, played by who? Kevin Costner. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so fine. Frank Hammer is cr- cool. quoted as saying, the criminal is a coyote always taking a look over his shoulder. Yeah. Ooh, well, that's good. Keep them, keep them on their toes. Look, you know, all I have to say is, you know, ladies and gentlemen, for you scoring at home, we get to drink, but for you... Bollocks is a learning experience, <laughs> and often for me. No, it's for. It's, I, I walk out of here, I learn things. This is why I love. I love yep. doing this show. Yep. Is the preparation and yeah. the appreciation I have for human life. Like, like, you know, this guy. This guy makes you want to do better. Yeah. You know, I mean, they, like, I feel like okay, I'm doing okay, I'm doing okay, and then I read about this guy. It's like I suck. Right, I'm not worthy. I, I know. suck. I, I got to step up my game. Yeah. So, so of all your lawmen that you had, who was the one who impressed? Who was your Frank Hammer? I think it's Bass. Was it Bass? I think it's Bass Reeves. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you know he wasn't he, he he wasn't a whoremonger. He was he wasn't arrested for anything other than maybe the the killing the bad cook. Mm-hmm. Um, too much salt. Well, he, did he kill him? I think he just shot him. Oh, I would presume oh, no, he, uh, he had to die. Yeah, he, yeah, he had to die. Yeah, right. um, you know. Whereas everybody else, like I said, you know, um, gunslinger, lawman, uh, saloon keeper, uh, yeah, um, like White gamb- Herp. gambling hall, gambling. Like, you like know. when I got into White Herp, White Herp was Herp was a he was a, a pimp. He was a pimp. He was a gambler. He was a card player. Married teenagers. His his yeah. I mean, he just wasn't a great dude and. That's the reason I, I switched over to Bat because I felt like Bat was a better character. Absolutely, absolutely. So and and you know got out of it gracefully and went into journalism and you know, um, and wrote about the the old west. I mean, he was know? he was pretty much best friends with Wyatt though. Absolutely. Um, so. Well, that was the thing. You know, the the one thing that everybody said about Wyatt Earp was the loyalty. Mm-hmm. You know, him and Doc Holliday and and all those guys, Bill, Bill yeah, well, Hill. The, well, the Virgil and his brothers. Yep. I mean, yeah. you know, you're going to be loyal to your family. But but they were loyal to each other, too, because yeah. Bill Tillham was in there. There was a um, <sighs> there, there was a group of them that were together that was a, 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 a police commission, and they were all in there. You know, and the the, the interesting thing is, is if you, you, you did a pie chart or a family tree type of thing, how these guys inter- interwove with each other and how they crossed over. It was fascinating well, how the they were. They all lived yeah. very long it, lives. And contemporaneous, yeah. They, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it was pretty incredible. You know, their um, paths all crossed. And, and one of the things that bothers me, and to, you know, when we were growing up, we played cops and robbers. Yeah. And it was very clear the cops were the good guys. Black hats, white hats. And the, the, the robbers were the bad guys. Mm-hmm. All right. Kids don't play cops and robbers anymore. They're more—they're no. more blaming the police. Well, 
them backing the police in a lot of ways. And it's uncomfortable. Well, you know, so much police corruption has been exposed. Mm -hmm. I mean, look, at one point in time, I was going to go into we were doing this. I was thinking about doing Frank Serpico. Oh, yeah. Y you know, um, and, and the Crime Commission. Yeah.